Use this video to practice your work in operations with integers. As you complete practice problems, make sure you think about how you're explaining your thinking. This is what we would model to our students and what we would expect them to be able to explain to us. Find the answers to each of these problems, and as you do that, explain your thinking. Why are you doing what you're doing? Pause the video as you complete the problems, and then see if your thinking agrees with mine. In the first problem, I have positive 5. That means I have 5 of something. I'm going to add to that positive 5 a negative 3. That means I'm taking 3 things away. So when I do that, I will end up with 2 positive things left. I can also think of this on a number line, starting on positive 5 and moving in the negative direction 3. I don't have enough to cross that center 0 line, so I end up at positive 2. In the next problem, I have negative 6. That means I don't have 6 things. And I'm going to add 2 more things that I don't have. So that now means I don't have 8 things. So my answer is negative. In the next problem, I start with negative 8. That's eight things I don't have, or eight on the negative side of the number line. If I add nine positive things, that means I've made up for the eight things I don't have, and I have one additional left that is positive, because the nine was positive. Or if I think of it as a number line, starting on negative eight and moving in the positive direction, nine numbers, I will cross zero and end up with positive one. In the next problem, I have a positive 1, something I have, and I'm going to add 8 more to it, and so my answer is positive 9. In the next problem, I start at 0. I have nothing, and I lose 3 things. Or, on the number line, I move 3 to the negative side, which means I'm going to end up at negative 3. As a teacher, you can decide if you want students to add negative and positive signs to every number to make it very clear what they mean, or if it's okay that they just represent positive numbers as a number and then identify the negatives with the negative sign. Try these problems in subtraction and explain your thinking. Pause the video and listen to my responses when you are done and see if we are in agreement. If the first problem were 10 take away 3, that would be easy. I have 10 of something, I take away 3, that means I have 7. But I have 10 take away negative 3, which really means I'm not taking away anything. In fact, I'm taking away things I don't have, which means I have to have more to start with. It's quite confusing. So 10 take away negative 3 is 13. One way we can help students understand this is by having them do the reverse operation to check. When we teach subtraction with whole numbers, we often have them check their answers by adding. So the answer they get when they subtract, they add to the number they had subtracted, and they should end up with the number they started with. And we can do that here. Our problem was 10 take away negative 3 equals 13. So that means that 13 plus negative 3 should equal 10. So if we set up the problem this way, we can see that it does. In the next problem, we have negative 2. That means we're short two things. We're going to take away 5 more. If we're already short 2 and we take away 5 more, we're going to be short 7. And if I do my reverse operation, negative 7 plus 5 will equal negative 2. In the next problem, I'm already short 4 things and I'm going to take away negative 3. Well, if I took away 3, then I would be short 7. But I'm not taking away 3. I'm taking away negative 3. That means I'm taking away things that I'm already short, which makes me move toward the positive direction. So my answer here would be negative 1. We can check this again with our reverse operation. Negative 1 plus negative 3 equals negative 4. In the next problem, I'm already short 1, negative 1, and I'm going to take away 6 more. If I'm already short 1 and I take away 6 more, I'm going to be short 7. And if I check with reverse operation, negative 7 plus 6 equals negative 1. 
Subtraction of integers can be confusing for students, so the more you can do with number lines or talking about those reverse directions or even applying it to something they would understand, like being short of money because they owe money or something else that's real to them. I think that we need to do this for a very long time with integers so that they understand that whole subtraction and how the subtraction sign relates to a negative sign specifically. Try these multiplication problems explaining your thinking. Pause the video and then see if your thinking matches mine. In the first problem, we have a group of 10 and we're going to take it two times. If I have 10 of something and I take it two times, I'm going to have 20. In the second problem, I have a group of five. I have a group of five that I'm going to take negative four times. That means it's like subtracting it four times negative. So if I have 5 times 4, that's 20, but it's negative, so my answer is going to be a negative 20. In the next problem, I have negative 4. I'm already in the hole by 4, and I'm going to be doing that three times. So if I'm in the hole 4, or I owe somebody 4, and I do that three times, it means I'm going to be in the hole for 12 things. In the second problem, I have negative 3, and I'm going to take that negative 3 negative 2 times. Now, if I owed somebody $3, that means I would be negative 3. And if I did that 2 times, it means I would be negative 6. But if I owe them that negative 2 times, that's that extra reversal, which is almost like I paid them back. So my answer is actually positive 6. Again, for students who struggle with this, using the number line is a very good idea. For example, if we look at this problem, I have 5, so if my 0 is here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and if I take that 5 negative 4 times, it means I'm going to hop by 5's in the negative 4 times. So I'm going to be going this direction, this direction. So if I could see that and keep doing that, I would end up on the negative side. If I take a look at this problem, I have something interesting to think about. So I have negative 3, and I want to hop by negative 3's negative 2 times. Now that negative 2 right here tells me that I'm changing my direction. So before I can even start, I know that I'm going to be going the other direction. Negative 3's would go this way but I'm changing my direction. So I'm going to go this way and I'm going to hop twice and I'm going to end up over here at positive 6. Again, this is a very abstract concept. It's sort of like if I owe somebody $3 and I owe them $3 twice, that means I owe them $6, which would be negative. But if I take that negative 3 times negative 2, it's like I've paid them back twice. I've come back out of the hole, which is why I end up at positive 6. Try these division problems explaining your thinking. Pause the video and then check your thinking with mine when you're ready. In the first problem, I have 10, a positive 10. So I have 10 of something. And I want to know how many groups of 5 are in that 10. 5 and 5 is 10, so that means I have 2 groups. In the next problem, I have 12 of something. 12 of something would end up here on a number line. I want to know how many negative 3's are there in 12. If I start on this number line and I go by negative 3's, I can go forever and I'm never going to reach 12. So what that tells me is I have to change my direction. And if I change my direction, that means my answer is going to be negative. I know that before I even start. So if I change my direction, and now I hop by 3's, 1, 2, 3, 4, I would hop 4 times to get to 12. So my answer is negative 4. In the next problem, I have negative 6. That's here. I want to know how many 2's are there in negative 6. Now some people would say, well, that means I'm just going to hop by 2's. So if I do that, I do this, and it would be three times.
But if somebody did that, they weren't hopping by twos, they were hopping by negative twos. So if we hopped by twos, as the problem says, we would have to go this direction and we would never get to a negative six. So we have to change our direction first thing, which means it's going to be a negative. Once we change our direction, then we can hop by twos and our answer would be negative three. In the last problem, we want to know how many negative threes there are in negative nine. Negative nine is here, and I want to know how many negative threes are in that negative nine. If I start at zero and I hop by negative threes, I can hop by negative three three times to get to negative nine. And if I hop by negative threes, that means I'm going this direction, and I will get to negative nine. I didn't have to change my direction, so I don't have to put a negative sign in my answer. Integers is quite an abstract concept for students and sometimes for teachers. It can be quite confusing because it's representing something that isn't really there. When we talk about negatives, we're talking about something we don't have. So using a number line or using a picture is very important to help students understand.